Good morning, it's Peter Coffin. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for being subscribed or just wandering on to the Center for Political Innovation YouTube channel. Giving you a nice good morning message. People talk about capitalism like it's a person. And he is a huge dick in people's eyes. Capitalism this, capitalism that. Capitalism hit me with a wiffle ball bat. Sorry. Uh... <laughs> He, he bursts in unannounced, pisses in your breakfast cereal, and says, Ha ha! I've got everything and you've got nothing. But capitalism has something very much in common with Marxism. They both seem to get continually redefined as things that they are not. Neither Marxism nor capitalism are moral positions to take. That's not to say that they're bad or immoral. It's to say that they're amoral, as in... They have nothing to do with morals. The germ of all that is capitalism is articulated in socialism, utopian and scientific, the primo mwah, beautiful work by Frederick Engels as the socialization of production while retaining the feudal mode of appropriation. That is one that presupposes that most work is done not socially. What does that mean? It means there are two classes of people. Um, one that is doing all of the work, it's socialized, it's coming together to get it all done, and a class that retains the product of this labor. Because this class owns the means of production and the mode of appropriation we have presupposes that they're doing all the work, except they're not, and that's, that's capitalism. And it's not a matter of whether it's fair or not. This contradiction creates the problem that we've talked about a lot in documentaries, in our conferences, in videos. Caleb talks about it on streams all the time. If you're reading it out of Marx, it's the overproduction crisis. If you're interested in talking about the specifics of that, there's plenty of stuff about that on this channel. I would highly suggest that you check it out. I don't, I don't want to go into huge amounts of detail here, but ultimately, the problem with capitalism is that it's mathematically unsound. Yeah, as it turns out, it's not that it's just evil or driven by greed or any of that. It's a mode of appropriation that conflicts with the mode of production, uh, one being social and one presupposing that all work is done by an individual. Now. People who talk about Marxism as good and capitalism as bad, those people are engaging in idealism. They are ascribing a moral value, not, not a value based on labor derived from the work going into something, but a simple colloquial moral value to capitalism and Marxism. They're good and evil. And the thing that's fun about this is without the material distinctions that are made, it stops being about the implausibility of capitalism and instead starts being about what would be good and moral and righteous and excellent and all of these things that I'm tired of hearing people say, honestly. <laughs> Humanity doesn't prescribe a future. Humanity solves the problems of the present and that creates history. The problem of the present is the mathematical implausibility of capitalism without that basic distinction at the core of criticism that we are to put forward. That criticism simply becomes idealism, and that idealism exists in an attention economy that, guess what, breaks everybody up into fandoms and ascribes identity politics to things that are just frankly not identity at all. Lifestyle marketing is what we might call it. Uh, lifestyle Marxism and that aesthetic of rebellion, of transgression, is easy to turn into something that directs people away from any real kind of action. And I'm specifically talking about the kinds of things that the Center for Political Innovation is known for at this point. Members of this organization spend their time and expend their energy demonstrating, educating, connecting, and doing everything possible to bring about the kinds of consciousness that we need to react to the actual contradictions in society in a manner that might progress us beyond what we have now. It's an exciting organization to be part of, and 
I think you should join. Now, my part, I make stuff. You probably know me as a critic or a documentarian or a comedian or one of these things. I, basically, I use everything as a vehicle to try to say something about how things are. As you might have noticed from this particular video, I have a lot to say about internet Marxism. I made a documentary about it called Marx for Sale, Commodifying Class Struggle. It's premiering today at youtube.com slash at symbol important D's. If you feel like typing a lot, you can go to youtube.com slash very important documentaries, but I don't know why you would do that when you can type at symbol important D's. It's about an hour and 25 minutes and I'm really proud of it. Two big things from me today though, Marks for Sale, Commodifying Class Struggle comes out on my YouTube channel at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and two, join CPI, my friends. The fact is that dues-paying members make stuff happen. We could constantly go to big donors and do whatever the hell they want us to do, but we don't. We wanna to go to the people, and to do that, we need members. Uh, it's 10 bucks a month, and whether or not you take part in any actions that we plan and execute, uh, that membership goes a long way in helping those things happen. Anyway, I'm going to thank you a ton for your time. Uh, obviously, like this video. If you're not subscribed to the CPI channel, subscribe right now. Um, I hope you have a lovely Saturday, a lovely weekend. And I hope to see you at the premiere of my video. There's obviously a chat. I'll be in it. I'll be having a good old time with everybody chatting away while we watch my documentary. I'll see you again soon.